Good afternoon and welcome to today's class, which, which is the Windsor Newton Sunlit Forest. My name is Tim DePack and I'm from Windsor Newton. I'll be your moderator for today. And please join me in welcoming our newest artist instructor to the Windsor Newton class curriculums for Michaels, Nikki Trakos from Life I Design. This is Nikki's first class and we are very excited to have her join us. In this class, Nikki will introduce herself, speak about the inspirational piece and provide some information about the products being used and show you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques all while creating this sunlit forest landscape piece using Windsor Newt professional watercolor paints along with the Windsor Newt professional synthetic brushes. She'll also give you a sneak peek of her next class, which is Poppy Field, which will be on Tuesday, June 21st. I'll provide the link in the chat for those of you who'd like to sign up for this class. There was an inspirational piece that was for this class that was on your confirmation email. If you did not get that, I'm gonna drop the link for that right now. So you have that in the chat box. Uh, upon completion of this class, you'll be sent a survey. Please let us know what you thought about this class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics you'd like to see Nikki form, perform for us in the future. This class is being recorded and the replay will be available 24 hours after the Michaels, after the class concludes, 24 to 48 hours on michaels.com or the Michaels YouTube channel. Here you'll also find the class outline and all the materials and instructions completed for this piece of work. Please feel free to follow along and paint with Nikki or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Nikki. Thanks, Tim. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me in my first class. Thank you to Michaels and Windsor Newton for hosting. I hope that we have a lot of fun today, which I think we will. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nikki. I am an artist and instructor. And when I'm not painting in the studio, I really love spending time outdoors. I'm either photographing plants and flowers to paint or spending time in nature and hiking, which is another passion of mine. So I'm constantly drawing inspiration from nature and from the outdoors and bring that into my artwork. Um, so you may know me from my Watercolors Made Simple classes where I teach watercolors in a very approachable and simple way. I'm going to be bringing that into our class today. So really what I want you to do is relax. We're gonna take a deep breath in and just get into the process of enjoying painting with watercolors as we approach painting this beautiful sunlit forest that I'll show you when we go top down in a very um, artistic and open expression. So I don't want you to worry about painting it very literally. We're going to use it for inspiration where we'll capture the sunlight that's coming in through the trees and bringing in some of those shadows, okay? So no pressure today. We're going to have fun. I'm going to teach you my personal approach and really just enjoy painting this beautiful sunlit forest, okay? And if you can't paint along with me, if you're finding maybe you just want to sit back and watch and maybe ask some questions or observe, that's okay too, because with the replays, you'll be able to go through the lesson again and again. And I hope you do. I hope you enjoy painting this a few times and seeing how you can interpret it and have fun with it. So with that said, let's go ahead and go top down so I can show you my supplies and we'll get started painting, okay? So I do have my inspirational piece that I've painted already. I'm going to put that aside. I, again, don't want to necessarily paint this piece identically to what we see. We really just want to play with the color and the light and I'm going to show you how to do that very loosely. So I'll have my inspiration off to the side and hopefully so that you can see it as well. And what we'll do is talk a little bit about supplies. So for the paper, I'm using the Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Paper. I really love this paper because it's 100% cotton. When we paint landscapes, we'll, especially for the first layer, we'll be using a lot of water. So it's important that you use a full cotton um, quality paper so that it can accept all of that water and the watercolor medium that we'll be putting down. Now I've cut the nine by 12 square sheet in the pad I just showed you in half. And then I've taped using, this is just, um, duct tape or 3M tape, you can get at Michael's. I've taped a border so that my piece is five by seven. That way, after you finish painting, hopefully you'll want to frame your piece and enjoy it and show it off. So painting that nice clean edge allows us to have a clean edge on our finished piece. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that while I talk a little bit more about colors and what I have beside me. For brushes, uh, like Tim said, I'm using the professional watercolor brushes. I have a number 12, a number eight, and a six round. I primarily paint using round brushes. I love that I can get a nice thick wash with the larger brush, 
but also have a fine tip. So when I go ahead and put in my details, I'm able to do that with a round brush. Next, the five colors that I chose for this project are Windsor Yellow. We have set permanent sap green, a little bit of Windsor Blue Red Shade, and some permanent rose and sepia as well. And then we're gonna do a little bit of color mixing. So just to tidy up my space here, give myself room to move, I'll move those tubes around. And I have also in front of me two jars of water um, and I'm going to be using a heat gun so I can speed up the process of drying in between layers. If you don't have a heat gun, then just have a little bit more patience in between layers as we go, okay? So what I want you to do, if you've taped down your piece, let's go ahead and use our inspiration to draw in some of our trees and also our horizon line. So when I look to a landscape photo for us to paint, I really want to look for personality. So things that we're going to highlight is this beautiful sunbeam effect coming in through the trees. Also the shadows that the trees are casting on the forest floor. And I also am looking at the trees themselves to really decide what I wanna focus on. So I'm not going to be drawing in every single tree, but what I will be doing is I've gone ahead and cropped a photo too so that you can see my inspiration. I'll draw in a few of our larger ones. And then at the end, if we have room to add a bit more detail, we'll go ahead and put in some of these thinner trees as well. Okay, just so you get an idea of where we're going with our drawing. So if I look at my photo, I can see that the top, I'd say two thirds of our piece is really the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in, and I'll draw my pencil line a little bit darker so you can see, but if you want to use a lighter line, go ahead. And the pencil I'm using is just like a 2B. So really nice and soft so that we can then erase our lines. So next up, I really want this front tree here to be bold. So I'm just going to loosely start at the top and come in and draw in and let your line be a little bit wobbly. So really start to bring in a bit of personality to that tree. And then we'll go into the next one here. And I can see if I look at my photo, that little tree on the end really comes in at about a third of the way, not even, sorry, maybe an eighth of the way up the page. So I don't want it to sit on this horizon line. I really want it to come in just a little bit lower. So we want to make it look like we're walking through the forest and we're starting to see the variation in the trees there. So then I have my two outer trees drawn in. I'm looking at the center of my piece and I really do want to be a little bit off center, just above my horizon line, or sorry, below my horizon line. I'm going to pop in another tree here. And again, let it be loose and a little wiggly because trees aren't perfectly straight and symmetrical. You want that personality to come through from the beginning. And then my eye is always looking to see where I can create a little bit of interesting focal point next. I'm gonna create a smaller tree outline here. So just a bit higher than that last one and also a bit thinner. So we create variation by how thin and how thick our trees are. So at this point, I will stop for a moment and go ahead and erase these horizon lines just so it's not um, confusing when I start to actually paint but you can see already how much of the forest is starting to show through. So then if I look at these back trees here, I really do want it to look like we are um, in and amongst the forest. So I want to draw in a few more trees and these will be smaller. By smaller, I mean thinner. And maybe we'll even pop one in just on the horizon line here. So again, it, it will feel a little bit confusing until we start to draw in or bring in our paint, but I want you to just follow the process, be open to it. So this tree here, I want it to lean in because I feel like we have a lot of straight trees. So just go ahead and follow, make it a little bit thinner, and then we can even pop one in behind here too. Okay, and as far as, the trees go, I think we're going to stop there because with our paint, we'll be able to paint in a few more of our trees to fill in that forest. Okay, so at this point, if you wanted to add more trees, please feel free. If you wanted to simplify it because it's feeling 
um, a little bit busy and maybe harder for you to follow, it's okay. Go ahead and leave out a few of the trees. That's no problem. Now, if we look at our photo, what catches our eye is that bright, beautiful sunlight there. So I want you to remember to leave that area nice and open. So we're just going to go ahead and erase that center bit and plan where our sunlight's gonna come through the trees. Okay, so go ahead and use your eraser. So when we're bringing in paint, we're even going to create these sunbeams. So I'm just using a kneadable eraser so that I don't have eraser bits on my watercolor paper. And these erased lines will remind me where to put in my um, sunbeams. There we go. Okay, I think that's a good outline so far. That'll be really good for us to follow. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pencil away, grab my brushes and let's start painting. Okay, so using my number 12, the largest brush, I'm going to really get it nice and wet. And for our first layer, we really want it to be um, very soft in focus. Now I'll have darker pencil lines than um, you will. So keep that in mind, but we want that first layer to be really nice and um, soft and blended out. And the way we do that is with a wet on wet technique. So I'm really wetting that paper and that's why it's important to use the 100% cotton because you really want the paper to be able to accept all of that water that we're putting on top. And the first layer, we're gonna start working from the back out, there we go. So we're going to start drawing in that yellow of the sun and I'm going to use straight lemon yellow. So it's much brighter than what's in the photo and that's okay because that's the interpretation and how I want to express bringing in that sun. So I'm keeping the center area where we erase those lines really nice and light and I'm just working outwards from the center to drop in that first layer of yellow. Okay, and again, working wet on wet allows us to watch that yellow just flow where it needs to flow as we bring in a little bit more. And I'm just dabbing with the tip of my brush to grab a little bit more opaque wash. And you can see there how the yellow is a little bit stronger to bring in those that sun flare. And if you're feeling like you overdid it, maybe you added a bit too much yellow, I'm gonna show you a trick. Go ahead and clean off your brush. I'll use my paper towel to dry my brush off. And again, while it's still wet, you have control. You can go ahead and lift off a little bit of that yellow to bring back those sun flares. Okay, just wiping off each time to remove some of that yellow. Now, what you also don't see in the picture really, it's a little bit um, bright because of that sunlight is the sky. Now, if we mix yellow and blue, we'll get green. So we want to be a little bit careful with this blue, but I really enjoyed adding a bit of blue to my original sketch when I worked on this piece. So I'm going to go in just at the horizon line and in between these trees, bring in a little bit of that blue sky. I like to do that too, just to add a little bit more interest and color to the piece, knowing that this sky is very almost washed out. And I'll go in just in between the trees here. And because it's wet on wet, you can see it's just really nice and um, soft. We don't have harsh lines really. And I can easily just drop it in and let it Nikki, as you're doing that, I'm just gonna let everybody know you are using Winsor Newton watercolor, professional watercolor paints for this project. Oh, yes. And in the chat, I just dropped down the information that was on the sign up sheet that has the the color names and the, the codes and stuff like that. If people want to, Perfect. if they weren't able to buy them in the store and stuff like that. But just let everybody know it's Winsor Newton professional watercolor paint and she's using the paint from the tubes. Yes, thank you, sorry about that. Because I had dispensed the colors, I had a time to save a bit of time for the lesson. Um, yes, so I am using the Winsor Newton tubes. They are my preferred choice of paint. So I'm just going and picking up a little bit of water to blend it away. Um, because they're highly pigmented, I can just pick up a tiny bit of this blue with the tip of my brush 
and you can see how nice and dark that blue is. Even though my paper is wet, you can still see the color. Very pigmented, which means I have lots of control with how much I can layer it, um, the effect of it, I don't need to use a lot of it. And the colors are true to what you see. If you're finding that your paintings are maybe a little bit dull when you're working with watercolor, changing your watercolor paint will make a big difference. So I hope, that, sorry, I missed that when I was- And also tell everybody that you're working with the Windsor Newton uh, Professional Synthetic Sable brush right now. So those brushes there are designed to hold a lot of water. So as you're dipping and stuff like that, you're able to, it's almost like a reservoir that's built inside of those brushes. So something yeah. different we haven't used in the other classes previously, so. Yes, and they do, they hold a ton of water, which is what you want for when you're painting these, especially these landscape pieces. Okay, so at this point, if you're finding that your sun flare maybe um, got away from you, it's not as bright as you would like, I just grabbed a tissue and I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of that um, pigment to make sure that the center of my sun flare is really nice and bright. We can always add a little bit more pigment if we choose um, once we get going in the painting. But to begin, we always want to work light to dark to start to really draw in that um, the brightness there in the sun. Okay, so at this point, I'm looking at the floor of the forest and I want to start to bring in a little bit of that green and then mix a purple as well. So my paper is still nice and damp. So we wanna work wet on wet. And what I'm going to do is focus on dropping in some of that green just in between the trees here. And then we'll draw in some of the um, shadowing as well. So just, you can even bring it right up to that horizon line because when we mix the blue and the green together, we'll just get a nice dark version of that green. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it all the way down, grabbing even a little bit more of that green and I'm going to start planning where my shadows are. So just drawing in, again, really pigmented. I'm picking it up just with the tip of my brush, still using my number 12. And I can draw in a little bit more of these shadows. And that so, green color that Nick is using is sap green, permanent sap green. Yeah, permanent sap green. And again, just really nice pigmented. My paper is still wet, so you can see that it's just blending. I'm not getting harsh lines yet. And we can drop in that green tone. Perfect. So now as we go, this top layer is feeling still a little bit damp which is good. I'm going to bring in some of this green and actually I think I'll change brushes too because I want to start bringing in some of the leaves on the trees. So I'll go ahead and pick up my number eight. So it's still going to absorb lots of water and really create a nice um, puddle when I pick up the water with this brush, get it nice and saturated. But because it's a bit smaller, I'm able to go ahead and see these little light uh, yellowy sort of leaves there. I'm going to start with a little bit of green and I'm just going to go in between the trees that we drew in to start to bring in a little bit of the foliage here and there. And again, because the piece is still wet, these little brush strokes will give you the idea of there being some leaves in between, we can even go up here and it'll start to create a more dynamic background as we go. And I always say with watercolor paintings, especially when we're doing landscapes, if you're feeling like your piece doesn't look good or maybe you're feeling like, oh, it's a bit ugly, it's okay, push through that because you're really laying down your foundation before you start to add in really the definition that brings that excitement of the piece together. Okay, so going back to my leaves, I'm going to go ahead now and pick up some of this yellow. And as I'm dropping the yellow onto the green, they're actually mixing together and creating a really nice, um, a different version of the green. So if we mix yellow and green together, we're just going to get a yellowish green, but it'll give us another effect, which is kind of cool. And dropping wet on wet while the paper is still wet with really pigmented 
paint like the Winsor & Newton Professional Tube, you will be able to achieve some beautiful effects there. Okay. So I'm just gonna step back for a second, look at the piece. And again, thinking about the grass, this is a good time to put in a little bit of our um, darker strands of grass. So again, I'm gonna pick up a smaller brush. So this is the number six and get it nice and wet. I'll pick up some of this green, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of the blue. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing a darker version of that green. So I'm using a clean well and you decide what how dark you want that green to go. I am my goal is to make it just a little bit darker than what it is. So now I'm looking for the shadow and what I'm going to do is start to drop in some of that darker pigment there and start to create that nice shadow that I can see casting by this big tree in front there. And again, quite happy with the color of the green that's coming through. So again, because my paper is still wet, what's happening is it's just really spreading out really nicely and giving the illusion of a shadow without having um, strong demarcation lines. Okay, and I'll even go in through, just looking at my horizon line, I can even bring in a little bit more depth there to add to the piece. And you can see already how bright that sunlight is. And then again, bringing in the shadows from the trees there. So at this point, if you don't have a dryer, I'm just going to blend in this piece. Um, I'll invite you to be patient. I'm going to use my dryer just to dry um, my piece a little bit before we continue. Okay, that should be good to get the trees put in. So now at this point, it's not fully dry, but I'm okay with it being a tiny bit damp as we start to put in our first layer of the trees. So for the trees, I chose a sepia. I want a brown that is um, really nice and neutral in tone. So it doesn't have a lot of yellowy red undertone and it'll create these really nice bold trees that we are looking for in this piece. So at this point, I'm gonna give you a tip that I love to use for when you're painting straight lines. I'm going to turn my piece to the side and just so you have this for visual reference, I'm going to use the tip of my brush. So again, these Winsor Newton brushes hold a lot of water, but you still get that beautiful tip when you're using the round brush. And if you use the tip to guide, I'm gonna make sure that I actually skip a little bit here too, because I want that sunbeam to come through on the tree. But if you use that tip of the brush to guide you, you'll be able to paint a really nice straight line quite easily. So don't try, don't fight with it. Make sure you can turn your page so that you can paint freely without worrying about not being able to paint straight by just turning your page sideways. Okay. So what I've done is I've actually left a little bit of space where the sunbeams will come through. So while it's still wet, I have control. So I'm just wiping my brush off a little bit and I'm going to look at my image and pull away, making sure your brush is nice and clean and pull away those sunbeams. Okay, so you can see how we get nice streaks from where the sun would be shining in front of the tree and how easily we created that effect. And while the tree is still wet, she's gonna pick up more of that opaque bit of paint. While the tree is still wet, you can go ahead and add just in short strokes, some really nice definition to draw on that tree. So those trees are very dark because they are shadowed. We are looking towards the sun they will be really nice and dark. And I always like to make sure that I paint out the outer edge because once we pull our tape away, we want that tree really to make an impression with our painting. So I just cleaned off my brush and I'm softening the lines that I just put in for our tree trunk. 
So you can see already just how much depth that creates in our tree. So I'm not gonna turn my um, page sideways again. I'm going to paint up and down, but feel free if you need to turn your page sideways, go ahead and then you can even do that to your reference as well. So we'll go ahead and paint this tree next. I like to work left to right so I don't get my hand in the wet paint. So make sure if you are right-handed, work left to right. If you are left-handed, do the opposite. So your hand's not in the paint. So I'm just following my pencil lines. And then again, when I get to this sunlit part, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. Again, wash off my brush. I can even just blend it while it's still wet. That's the beauty with watercolor, you have control. And I can see in here, go ahead and recreate that sunlight coming through the trees. And pulling it, away. It's really skin. amazing that that it's white where the sun is and how bright it is. It looks like from where I am, I'm getting hit with rays of sun from here. <laughs> amazing! Yeah, yeah, I hope everyone else is able to follow along and get that too. Because there's awesome. no color there. You you left. There's no color in the middle of that sun, but it's so bright. It's crazy. Yeah. See, we don't have to be literal. We can just play around with our value with the light and really draw that in. So again, I'm just going over that tree, blending it out a bit. I don't want it to be perfect, but looking at my image, I can see there's a little bit of shadow just at the base there. You can pick up a bit of your green even and just, just hit it very slightly. And that will create some really nice shadow at the base of your tree. So it doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of the grass, that it's actually um, just below it, okay? So this is the process. We're gonna go ahead and do the next one now. So again, using, I might even switch brushes. Let's go ahead and use our number six for the next one, just because it's a thinner tree. And I like to start from the bottom because I know that the bottom will be the darkest. And then as we go up, I look to the trees beside it to see where I need to maybe skip a little bit, just to make sure that we capture that light. And I may even just deepen the top here a bit. So again, by skipping areas of that tree, it gives that same effect like the light is coming through. So we're still working. It's wet on, I want to say damp, and especially if you didn't get a chance to dry your piece. So we are able to achieve a nice opaque line, but it's not a harsh line. When your piece is fully dry, you can always go back in and add. So this guy here, this is the tree that I'm looking at for my visual reference. And I can see the sun is coming through on this side of the tree. So I'll go opposite and just paint it into the right. And if I continue using your eye to look up, I know that in here I can go in a little bit darker. Okay, so wash off my brush, remove the excess paint, and then using what's already on my page, I can soften it and blend it. So again, while it's wet, you st still are in control. And for my beginners who are tuning in, if this feels a little bit more advanced, um, again, remember you can watch the replay, but just try to work on the process because that will help you. And the more you can repeat that process, the easier it becomes. And each time you sit down to paint, your knowledge and your confidence will increase too. Again, just hitting the base of those trees there. Okay, so again, you can start to see really that sun coming through. And I think even in here, so with just a clean brush, I'll go ahead and remove a tiny bit more. Just pulling away slightly. So I'm looking at this one here. So now that it's a bit dry, going back, I feel like that light spot needs to be toned down. So you can go back and forth and see as your paint starts to dry, it does dry a little bit lighter, but you can always add a little bit more paint to it. Perfect. Okay, so now for this front tree, I drew mine a little bit thicker because I really want that tree to be, um, to stand out a bit more. And again, I chose which trees I wanted to focus on. If you wanted to add more or less to your piece, 
that's totally use your personal preference, but I want this one to even come down a little bit more than the other few that we just painted. And I want it also to be a bit more bold. So I'm going to go ahead and fill them in. And again, just working because I'm imagining the sun is hitting it from this direction. So coming left to right, and I can bring in that piece there. Yeah, just like that. And again, here where I feel like it's a little bit um, too heavy, I'm just with a clean brush while it's still wet. Look at that sun flare coming down. So I'm just picking up and drawing that away. There we go. And then even looking in here, we can blend this. And one thing too about the trees, we'll go ahead and put in a few more leaves and things like that. So don't be afraid to leave open space so that we can go ahead and add a few more leaves in that. Oh, it's coming to life. I hope that it is for you as well in your piece. And maybe Tim, are there any questions that anyone has as I'm filling in this tree? I think everybody's pretty good. If anybody awesome. has any questions, please feel free to ask it in the chat and I'll try to answer it for you there. And if it's something that I can't or something that I really want uh, Nikki to answer on live on the call, we can address that as well. Awesome. So I'm just going in and what I'm doing is I'm shadowing the opposite side. So if the sun's coming in from this side, I just want to shadow the right side of my tree and that just gives it a little bit more depth and bulk. And once we're done as well, I'll show you how you can even add a bit more um, definition once your piece is dry. So I'm just going back to this tree again, going back and forth, really observe your contrast in um, light values, even light values within your tree in contrast to your dark values so that you have a nice balance because once you put in your darks, the light value becomes even more um, apparent so that it brings your piece to life as well, which is really cool. Okay, starting to come together. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna put these two in a little bit more quickly. How are we for time? We're good actually. And because I'm working on a larger tree as well, I'll go ahead and switch back to my number 12. Now it does pick up a lot of water. So go ahead and dab off the excess and just working in, go ahead from the bottom here. Yeah, I do have a question from the audience. Uh, what if the paper's starting to dry up? What, what can they do to wetten that up a little bit again? Yeah, so I would just use a bit, of, a bit more water on your brush. I don't want you to add too much water to your piece right now because we want to start to add a bit of definition. So just a little bit more water on your brush and then you can always go back or change brushes. So while that brush stroke is wet, I have control. I can go back and do my wet on wet technique in that tree there. Okay. So at this point, it's okay if your page is damp. So then again, going from the, the sun outwards, my brush is nice and clean. It is a tiny bit damp still from the water, but I'm just pulling out that sun flare. And at this point, I'm not even using my visual reference. I really want um, to be able to have a bit of freedom to interpret that sun flare. Because we're not painting it um, identically. We're not going to put in even the colors within the sun flare. You can see there's blues and oranges. I really want you to get the idea of how to create that sun flare so that you can decide later on if you want to add a bit more detail. So my brown ran a little bit, so I'm just going to pick it up with a clean brush to go ahead and remove that. Okay, so we'll add in this one here. So this tree almost looks like it's behind this trunk. I want it to be a little bit thinner and see by skipping, I'm not painting it in a solid line. Again, it just gives you that effect that the sun is casting that beautiful bright glow in front of it. Okay, so this is where I want you to be really good and bold or brave because we're gonna put in our last tree trunk here and it's going to be our largest one and it'll really help the feel of looking through trees. 
Okay, so really nice. I'm using my biggest brush. It's really nice and wet and again, opaque. And then to make sure we get that sun flare, I'm using a clean brush again and we can just pull away. And I'm looking at my photo reference to see what direction that sun flare goes in. And remember this tape's gonna be pulled away, so don't let it distract you. I feel like it just distracted me. And if you even want to soften it while your piece is still wet, you can go ahead and soften a little bit, create some nice texture. And even work in short strokes. So see how I'm just pulling away a little bit, creating a bit of texture on that front tree just by using my damp brush. Okay. Let me just have a look here. So now at this point, what we can do is really let this top portion dry and let's start to put in, making sure that the ground is wet, a little bit of our purple florals. So if our ground is really wet, I'm actually even going to pull up a little bit here just to blend. If our, the green grass was wet and we were to put in our violety purple flowers, um, they'd go really muddy. So I want you to make sure that your grass is really nice and dry as we mix our color for the florals. So I'm picking up some of my permanent rose and we'll use this little well here. And this is um, really up to you how much blue you want to mix. So we know just by basic color wheel that yellow, um, pink and blue make purple or that Permanent rose and blue make a nice violety purple. If you want it to be um, more on the plummy violet side or grapey um, violet side, you can just add a little bit more red so you can see how much that violet has changed color. And I want to make sure I have a really nice amount of paint in my well. So I'm just gonna go back and forth. And if you add more blue, it'll be more of a bluey purple. And again, it really is up to you. You can even use a watercolor, just an extra swatch card to see how much um, pigment or how purple you want your mix to be. But I'm just gonna go for it. So what I'm doing is dropping in, I feel like that might be dark for camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water to the mix to lighten it up. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop in using the tip of my brush and dabbing some of that floral floor. And I'm keeping in mind the shadow areas that the um, trees are casting. So just dropping in and again, looking at my photo reference, I can start to bring in some of that Really nice violet. Mine is actually looking like a grape, which is kind of cool. And again, play around with that color mix. If you want to add more of the permanent rose to see what it looks like, go for it because that variation will actually create a little bit more interest in your piece as well. And I'm just going to the horizon line now. I want there to be a little bit of depth and interest and when we do work in the horizon area, because that's the furthest point from where we would be observing the image, you want those brush strokes to be smaller, okay? So you want the perspective of those flowers that are further back to be a little bit um, smaller in size, and that will make your composition for your piece more interesting. And again, just working to the front here. bringing in a little bit more of our foreground. And again, at this stage, you might be thinking, oh, I don't know, it's not looking great. Just push through. Have faith that it is all going to come together. Because we will let this dry as we start to drop in some more florals. Okay. So I'm happy how that light is coming through here. I'm going to go ahead and do the same here. So the sun is coming in this way. Maybe it is bringing in a little bit of brightness. So I'm just going through and lifting while my brush is still wet, or sorry, my paper is still wet, 
I'm just going to go ahead and blend and lift through a little bit. And I can even dab a slight bit more to blend these brush strokes. And at the same time, I'm going back and forth from observing my photo. And I can even see in here that I've left a little bit light, but that's okay because we're going to add a bit of green to it. So now at this point, because we focused on this bottom area here, we're going to go back to our um, forest and start to bring in more leaves and even some of these smaller trees that you see. Now I didn't um, put them in with pencil because I know that we can easily add them um, with a little bit of our sepia. So first, I think what I'll do is add more leaves. So I'm going to pick up my yellow and I want a higher concentration of watercolor at this point. So again, the tubes of the Windsor Newton Professional is very pigmented. So I know that I can get a good strong brush stroke of color by just adding a tiny bit of water to the mix and more paint. So I'm creating almost a yellowy green um, and just going to dab it in. Again, very pigmented, looking at where the leaves would be. These ones are very yellow, but I want to add more green to contrast because green is a complementary color to the violet to contrast um, the violet that we'll be putting in. So again, you want your mix to be really concentrated. Maybe I'll even bring permanent sap green on its own. So the more variation you have between the colors, the better. So grab some of this lighter green now, bring it in here. And just imagine that these leaves are really nice and soft coming through the trees. Again, a bit more of our permanent green really concentrated. You can even bring them in front of the trunks of the trees, which will look really nice. And then I'm going to bring in some of that. So this is permanent sap green again, really nice high pigment. So not a lot of water, so more paint to water ratio as we start to bring in some of those leaves. And just smaller, so tiny dabs to create that. Washing off my brush, again, using my number six, I'm going to take some lemon yellow straight from my mix puddle here. You can do straight from the tube if you feel like you want a higher concentration. And that yellow is a really nice contrast to the sap green. And I'm going in front of trees at this point. So I want those leaves to overlap because these are even the leaves from the um, trees that are in the background there that we see off in the distance. Just a few more up here towards the sky and we'll paint in a few more trees. Nikki, I'm just gonna give you a time check. We're 15 minutes almost to the top of the hour, just to let you know. Goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. Awesome, so I'm gonna do one more layer of that green going to mix it in with my um, yellow. So I'm mixing more of a yellowish green. And I can see that my permanent sap green is nice and beautiful and strong. We're just going to add again another bit of variation. And even while I have some of that green on my brush, I'm going to start to paint in some of these um, grassy strokes that we see in the image. So just filling in really thin light strokes to start to fill in that forest floor a slight bit and even in between where we put in that violet there. And these little hits of detail that we're working on now, you can continue to work on this piece throughout the day, even tomorrow while it's dry. When you work um, on a dry piece, or your paper is dry, you're able to add in a little bit more definition. Okay, just going in and filling in that area there. Okay, I'm gonna speed up a tiny bit because we are running out of time. So I'm gonna go back into my um, sepia. I do have a lot of water in my mix here. So what I'm going to do is load my brush. So again, this brush can handle a lot of water and paint. But what I will do is just tap it onto my paper towel and let the paper towel absorb a little bit of the excess water. So now I'm looking at my horizon line 
and trying to find points where I can add in just the idea of a little bit of a thinner tree just off in the distance. So these ones will start at the horizon line and we'll start to fill in our forest. And you can even have the trees um, go off to the side. So again, maybe they're not perfectly straight. I can even have them follow up this way. So in order for the forest to feel like it is nice and full, um, like the image is, you want to add these little trees. And again, I'm just skipping. So you can see that I'm barely touching the page there. And just the idea or the impression of these smaller trees that are off in the distance. So just filling in that space. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a piece with two or three trees, but we really want to create the idea of a forest. You can even bring in branches into the back there just making sure that it connects with the horizon line. And maybe this one even drops down a slight bit. We'll go in this direction. So see how it's starting to just fill in. And again, it doesn't have to be a solid line. Be really loose. Let your wrist rest on the table as you move your brush. And that way it gives you the confidence and the control as well. And I'm just going to go across this way. Okay, and then you can even pull in a few so that they're not all sitting on the same line because they'll almost look like soldiers. We want to drop a few of them down below. Maybe even here we'll put in one more. Again, we're not using um, the visual to completely replicate literally what we see, but we're using it as inspiration. Okay. Good, coming along. So at this point, if I look at my um, forest area, as it's drying, I can still continue to go back and add um, more interest with the leaves, having them come in front of the trees a little bit. You can add as much detail as you want because we've already added in those um, first layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tapping, bring in a little bit more detail. And also, if you wanted to define your trees a little bit more too, using my number six brush again, I can now go in and start to add a little bit more definition to strengthen these trees, to add a bit more value to them. So even on this side, I'll go ahead and define this tree a little bit. So as your watercolor starts to dry, you can even see how light this tree has become. So, we can go ahead and add again, just a little bit more interest. And I'm lifting my brush just to give it um, some texture so that it's not a solid color or a solid value to give it again more interest. So if you look at tree bark, it's not one solid color or texture. And then I'll just continue up because this tree is in the foreground, I want it to be a little bit more um, bold and a little bit more of the focal point. And again, we can do the same here. So th with this piece, you can always add a bit more um, definition and detail to it as you go, because we have a really nice foundation. So I'm just going to the base of these trees there, really to bring in a little bit more depth to them. Good, okay, it's coming along. So you can see that sun coming through. You can see the contrast of the trees. I'm going to go in with my number eight. I just feel like this one looking at my screen can be a little bit darker still. So just by adding in that extra layer and building that depth and value there. Okay, so now that the foreground is pretty dry, we'll go ahead and add our finishing details. How are we for time? About 10 minutes, Tim? We are, yep, 10 minutes, but feel free if you have to go over. Okay, perfect. So I'm just mixing up a little bit more of that violet tone. I'm looking at my photograph. I'm going to go ahead and 
just at the base of the trees. I can see some shadowing coming in this way. I'll go ahead and paint in using the violet tone because that will be a really nice color addition. I'm going to go ahead and follow what I see in terms of shadows here with the um, sun coming through these trees. So again, this one really, and again, as you come closer to the front, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of definition between those little hits of flowers. So it's the illusion. We want to create the illusion of there being many flowers in this foreground here, which I'm determined to finish up. So again, this may feel for beginners a little bit um, more challenging and that's okay because I want to celebrate the fact that you are trying and painting along with me. As long as you get the process, sometimes that's the hardest thing to figure out is where do you even begin and how do you approach painting a piece like this? Again, because my paints are really pigmented, I can go in with this nice violet tone and go over top of my forest floor here. And I'm looking at this white spot here and I think it is time now to start to fill it in with a more watered down version of the violet to bring in that nice tone. And I'm just going to tuck it in between the green strokes as well to fill in the space. And again, remember while it's still wet, you have control. So you can go ahead and soften areas that you feel need softening and work to your tape line because when we remove the tape, which I feel like is one of my favorite things to do, you want to make sure that you have a really nice solid painted um, area around the tape line there. Okay, and then at this point, I'm going to wash off my brush and even pull in a little bit of this yellowy green that we blended. I do have a little bit more that I can pull up and go in between. And I'm just using the side of my brush. And again, think of it as um, little stems. You can even create some flicks, especially in the front here. Just try not to mix it um, too much with the more violet tone. And filling that in. And even in here where I feel like it's a little bit too bright, I'm just going to go ahead and... And when I'm working on a piece like this um, at my desk, I'll even hold it up. If you hold the piece um, away from you, it gives you a chance to almost look at it from a distance so that you can make sure that you've added some nice contrasting values. And I'm even going to dispense a little bit more of that yellow. And again, because I'm working with very pigmented paint in the professional line, that's the difference um, if you're using a more professional quality paint and tools is that you can go ahead, I'm adding just a little bit of brightness, is you can go ahead and use a light color like this yellow on top of what you put down to add just a pop of highlight and a nice light value and interest there. So it's almost where the sun would be coming through the trees. So opposite to the shadowed areas, so I feel like I did get a little bit darker up in there. So just almost without very little water mixed in, I can go in and put in again, just really nice bright spots too. Okay, so take a moment. And add in some contrast in green. Uh, 
I'm going to take this time on the keys, filling that in there. If anybody wants to save the chat transcript for this class, just go in your chat box, hit the three little dots after the little smiley face over there. It says more and you can save the chat. So if there's anything you want to save in there, I encourage you to do that right now before the class ends. Okay, so at this point, looks like we're getting close to um, the end. And what I want to chat about, and I think I'll stop here, Tim. Um, what I want to just chat with you about is you can take this another step further. So while your piece is completely dry, again, maybe in about a half an hour, or tomorrow, if you want to look at it again, you can go ahead and start to add in, again, another layer of that depth within the trees to make them look like they're coming forward even more. While your piece is dry, this is where I recommend bringing in just a little bit more detail and punching up the contrast, because when you do that, it'll actually make your brighter value even um, brighter. So it'll make that sun look like it's coming through. Hopefully you can see that as I'm bringing in the definition into this tree here. But again, this is a piece that you can continue to work on and add to as it's drying and as you are, um, yeah, as the piece is drying. So just again, looking at these back trees there. And while the foreground is still um, wet, I again would encourage you to go back with another layer of that violet mix or that grapey tone to bring in even more of these florals and just tiny, 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 tiny little dots. Because if you look at your photo reference, there are a ton of these beautiful little, I wonder if they're bluebells. If anyone knows, that would be interesting to kind of guess what these little flowers are. But you can just in tiny little dots bring in more of them into your piece. So really, you don't have to stop here. You can go ahead and continue to build on it. Okay, but I'm going to stop here because I think it's really exciting to see the tape pull and to see that nice clean edge that we created. Okay, so, and another tip also to remove your tape, don't pull upwards. I want you to pull back onto the tape so that it doesn't tear um, your watercolor. So it is tearing my background, but my watercolor paper, again, being 100% cotton, um, it is really durable and can take a lot. There we go, look at that clean edge. Oh, I'm taking my photo reference with me, that's okay. There we go. There's our finished piece. Okay, so again, you can add more detail to this. You can add more leaves, bringing in more of those florals and um, bring in as much, as much depth and detail as you want. So I'd love to see what everybody painted. If we could maybe go to gallery view and have everyone hold up their piece. If you painted along with me, that would be amazing. Thank you. Oh, they look so good. And I'm always amazed at how different everyone's piece looks. But again, the essence of that beautiful sunlight coming through the trees and that forest shadow, I think is really what our goal is to capture. Amazing. And if you're sharing on social, please tag us um, at Life I Design, at Windsor Newton, at Michael's Stores. We've got our hashtags here. I think Tim has been putting them in for you, which is awesome. And I yes, would I love have. to see. Nikki, can you show a preview of your next class? Yeah, Absolutely. let's see that one. So this is um, a great one. Again, if you're beginners, we're going to work on clouds and this um, poppy field and bringing in some really nice depth in the trees there. I was um, lucky enough to visit Tuscany just recently, and there are wild poppies growing everywhere. And to see them in and amongst these um, almost coves of trees is really beautiful. So we'll work on some clouds and um, have more fun painting some greenery and nature. Are we going to have fun? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Thank Great you again so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining my first class. I would love to hear your feedback. Tim will, um, I'm sure, share that with me. I hope to see you next yes. month. And thank you, Michael. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one.